It turns out fungal meningitis isn't the only thing patients who got tainted medication from epidural steroid injections need to worry about. The Tennessee Department of Health is once again reaching out to patients, warning them of other potential complications. And Vicki, this comes after nearly 50 patients have developed infections and other serious conditions. And it's just another reason there are growing calls tonight for the federal government to step in and do something to make epidural steroid injections safer. As News Channel 5 investigates first exposed, patients have been experiencing life-changing complications from these injections long before people started dying from the contaminated medicine. And now consumer investigator Jennifer Krause tells us patient advocates say it's time for federal regulators to get involved. We need action from the very top. We need a national response to this crisis. While Congress holds hearings in Washington focusing on the fungal meningitis outbreak, Helen Bertelli fears it isn't enough. The 36-year-old mother of two had an epidural steroid injection, or ESI, for back pain. And like a growing number of other patients, she developed a painful, life-changing complication. It's called arachnoiditis, and it's an incurable condition that causes numbness, even extreme, sometimes constant pain in the back and lower legs. And in the worst cases, it can cause paralysis. I was told there's no, no risk of long-term complications, and that simply isn't true. Bertelli, who lives in North Carolina and spoke to us through Skype, is now part of several grassroots groups pushing for tougher regulations and standards for those who administer ESIs. You have a lot of physicians and nurses giving injections and they don't know what they're doing because they don't have proper training. Okay, guys, let me in. And Dr. Lakshmaya Manchakati agrees. He's the chairman of the American Society of Interventional Pain Physicians and has been giving these injections for more than 20 years. In recent years, though, he says more and more doctors have jumped into the epidural steroid business in large part because it pays so well and they're pushing more and more patients to have them. We're almost done. I'm putting the medicine in. But not everyone who's giving these shots, Manchakati says, is first getting the extensive training he believes is needed. So mistakes are being made, and patients, he says, are suffering because the needle's put in the wrong place or in too far, and the lining of the spinal cord is punctured. There should not be that many complications if they are properly performed. It is a very large problem. It's a very significant problem. And that's why Helen Bertelli sent a letter to the FDA this summer calling for more training for those who administer ESIs, asking the FDA to track the number of patients who suffer from complications and pushing for patient consent forms to include meningitis and arachnoiditis as possible risks. The response she got from the FDA, she says, was underwhelming. But that, of course, was before hundreds Hundreds of ESI patients got fungal meningitis from contaminated medicine and before there was any sort of interest like this from Washington. And as much as she hates what's put these injections now in the national spotlight, she's hoping those who can make a difference now will. This is not a new problem. It's just grown bigger as a result of the fungal meningitis outbreak. And if we just focus on tainted medication, we will not learn anything from this. And while there is no proof at this point that the fungal meningitis outbreak was caused by anything more than the contaminated medication, the CDC now confirms that some of the patients with fungal meningitis are experiencing symptoms of arachnoiditis. And the Tennessee Department of Health says that includes patients here in Tennessee. Both the Health Department and the CDC say they're closely monitoring this development. If you'd like to see the rest of our investigation into epidural steroid injections and find out what you should ask your doctor before having one, go to newschannel5.com.